We're going to continue talking about images again, and images in front of uh, or behind mirrors. But this time, we're going to be looking at mirrors that are not flat mirrors. We've all seen an example of mirrors that are curved in some way. If we go to an amusement park or a fun house, we've so sometimes seen a hall of mirrors where you walk in and people take on funny shapes because of the curved mirrors that are uh, inside the fun house. The cartoonist who did this particular cartoon actually seems to have something about right in terms of how our intuition about curved mirrors should work. A um, mirror that's curved in from the sides makes uh, someone look taller and skinnier, or a mirror that's bulged out uh, toward the sides uh, makes so a skinny person look spread out. And we're going to explore today uh, exactly how that kind of uh, that, uh, reformulation of an image works uh, in, a, in a curved mirror. Our understanding of curved mirrors uses exactly some of the same tools as we develop for flat mirrors. We're going to use the law of reflection and we're going to continue to talk about light coming in at an, e uh, at an angle and leaving at an equal angle with respect to a perpendicular from the mirror. But when we talk about a perpendicular mirror, or excuse me, when we talk about a curved mirror like so, it's a little bit more uh, important that we be precise about what we mean by perpendicular to the mirror. We, sp we speak of flat mirrors something that's in a flat plane like this, it's very easy to say this angle is exactly perpendicular to the flat plane. And we can talk about light rays coming in at an angle with respect to that perpendicular. When we think about a curved mirror, however, uh, it's helpful to think about a very small bug on the surface of the mirror, just like we're a very small person on the surface of the planet Earth, which is also round. And we think about something that would be straight up for that bug or for us here on the surface of the Earth. In other words, if this circular surface or spherical surface has a center of curvature or a radius um, that's going back toward its center, this perpendicular points back toward the center and we have to think of this as straight up for the bug. And we'll have to get very good as we draw more and more pictures with curved mirrors in them at drawing perpendiculars to the surface at any point along the, the, the surface of this curved mirror. In fact, if I was standing right here, then the perpendicular for me would not point straight up and down like I've drawn here, uh, but would rather point off like so. That's the perpendicular. And then as we start considering light rays that hit the mirror at various uh, locations on the mirror, we must use the law of reflection coming in at equal angles and leaving at equal angles off of the perpendicular wherever the light ray hits the mirror. To give you a sense of what I mean by that, Let's look at a bunch of light rays coming into this particular curved mirror. And imagine that this is my laser ray box and it's a source of light. It's sending parallel light rays in toward a mirror that's shaped like so. So the shiny surface is facing outward and it has a radius of curvature and the center of this spherical mirror is located right there. This light ray, which is coming in and hits the mirror at exactly that location right there, is coming in at a certain angle off of the perpendicular. Notice I've drawn the perpendicular at the point where the light ray hits the surface of the mirror. And if I have to draw another angle off to the side that's exactly equal, then the exiting light ray looks like it should do that. And that angle I've meant to be drawn as exactly equal to that angle, again, with respect to the perpendicular. Here's another light ray coming in, and it hits the, the mirror right there. I've drawn a perpendicular that goes back toward the center of the, the mirror uh, at this point where the light ray hits at that point. And again, if that's the angle of incidence, I need to draw another angle of reflection that's about equal. And the light ray should do that. I can do this over and over again. I can think of a light ray coming into this mirror at this location, and its reflected ray should look something like so. And by the time I get to this right ray, it should point the, the reflected ray should point exactly straight back because it, the light ray is coming in on the perpendicular. In other words, zero degrees is the incident angle and zero degrees should be the exiting angle. You can tell my artistry is not as good as my talking in front of a camera. So the light rays look like they're spreading out from this spherical mirror. 
And it's not because they're spreading out from the light source. It's because the surface of the mirror is curved and the perpendiculars are all spread out. As a result, the reflected rays are spreading out as well. And this does important things when we think about images of real objects in behind a curved mirror. So here's an object we'll consider and again, a flower standing in front of a curved mirror. This is one that's curved outward. Sometimes you'll see the word uh, convex for this kind of mirror. Convex means bo bulge, bulging outward, and uh, the other type of mirror is concave, uh, like a bowl. So this convex mirror uh, will reflect light from this flower. I'm just drawing a few light rays from the top of the flower right now. But of course, light rays are coming and diffusely reflecting off of all parts of the flower. The light ray that heads in toward the center of the mirror and exactly hits right there at the center axis of the mirror um, should reflect down like so at an equal angle. The light ray that comes in along the, the perpendicular right there should reflect straight back. And the light ray that comes in uh, to this point on the mirror if it's coming into the perpendicular at a certain angle, it should come off of the perpendicular at a similar angle. And now it's important to think about what does an observer see? An observer who's standing back here, looking into the mirror, only sees the light rays um, as they come toward them. It doesn't see the flower directly. And what one tends to think is that all these light rays it can't travel in straight lines. And in fact, they all emanated from a point back there. Because all these light rays are spreading out, much like they would if we were standing in front of an object and looking directly at it. And we aren't able to process the fact that light rays actually reflected off of the surface of that mirror. And so this is where we would construct the top of the flower. By the same token, I can draw light rays from the bottom of the flower and imagine that they straight travel straight back. And I would imagine that the flower would look like it's right there.